Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I thought I would show you my process of making a patchwork wrapped journal cover. I've been showing these wrapped journal covers in several of my live streams, and someone asked for a particular specific tutorial showing how I construct these. First, I'm going to show you what I will be using. The first thing is during the March 31st, 2022 Mixed Media Live event, I made some gel prints. These are two of those gel prints where I took a gift card and used my decorative edge scissors and made this wavy edge. And then this was a tool that I had. And then I scanned those into my computer and I digitally enhanced them just a little bit. So they're a little bit different in color, but not a lot. And I printed those on fabric. So you can get different types, computer, printer, fabric, depends on where you want to get them. I'll have links in the description box where you can buy them on Amazon. You can also iron cotton fabric to the shiny side of freezer paper. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. And then you can make sure that they're perfectly eight and a half by 11 to feet to fit into your inkjet printer, print on the fabric side, and you'll get these types of results. This was another gel print that I made. This time I used rubber stamps and stencils and printed it on a dictionary page. I scanned that image in and here it is on the fabric, printed on fabric. So it's really close in color. I could have bumped up the contrast a little bit, but I kind of like that faded grungy look. These two pieces were elements that I gel printed for the live stream. And then I also printed this one. Now these are ironed onto freezer paper again so they would have body. They're not printed on my printer. They were gel prints. And I'm just peeling off the freezer paper just to show you how easy it is. You want to use a hot iron with no liquid, no steam in it. If you have a heat press, which I happen to have one of those for like garment t-shirt making, it works great to get that nice and smooth. And I do recommend that if you're going to put it through your printer, that you make up your pages, cut them perfectly the size that you want, and then put them under some heavy books that are perfectly the same size for a few days so they're nice and smooth. Here's another gel print. Now this is layers upon layers. So I gel printed on this three, maybe four times just to kind of get a grungy effect. And again, it is on freezer paper. I'm just kind of going through as I show you these. So you can see that that's the freezer paper and it was shiny on this side. And now I have this piece of fabric that's flexible. This is another gel print. I show a tutorial on layered paint gel printing and it's about a 10 minute video that shows how I put all the different layers in here and again I printed this on that printer paper that has fabric on it so you can see the fabric there and then these are gel prints that I did a standalone gel printing on fabric tutorial so I used my 5 by 7 gel plate and different stencils and made these and then lastly, I took from the Apothecary Garden journal kit from Calico Collage, and I printed what would normally be an 8.5 by 11 sheet on a 5 by 7 image. So I printed two of those because I wanted to cut these up and use them on the cover. Well, let me prep all of my papers by removing the backing, and I'm going to cut these, and I'll show you the process. All right, so since my gel prints on the fabric had a little bit of white space around them, I am going to line up my ruler down the sides and cut off that extra white space and use a rotary cutter. My surface that I have here is a cutting mat, and I guess I've hit a divot because it didn't cut all the way. So I'll just go ahead and go around all of the images and cut off the excess.
with the digital images, I've decided I want to cut them up. So I will cut them apart. Basically, Norella already had a center where the page is supposed to be folded when it's paper. I will cut these apart and then I'll cut down this side so that I can have smaller images to use. All right, so I've kind of got my pieces somewhat cut. I may end up cutting them some more. I like that patchwork look, and a lot of times you just deal with what you already have. Well, in the case of these, I printed them myself, so I can choose what size they're going to be. I have a foundation fabric here that I purchased a long time ago. It is approximately, I think it's 34 inches wide when you unfold it. And what I do is I determine how high I want my wrap journal to be. And in my case, I generally make an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half. So it makes it eight and a half tall, five and a half inches wide. I have a journal that's not going in this, but generally it's the same concept. So I would look at it and say, okay, I think I want to make this nine inches tall. And I'm going to grab my scissors here and measure about nine inches. Where's my ruler? So if I measure this out, I want to go at least nine inches tall. Sometimes I'll go a little bit past because it's okay to trim it down. And then I just rip it. Now the first rip that you make with a freshly cut fabric, you'll want to make right near the edge to get it smooth and straight. And then you can strip it from then on out. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I don't need both layers when I am creating the front part of the cover. So I'll just take my fabric scissors here and cut this in half. So approximately 17 by nine inches is what my foundation fabric is. I'll set this over to the side for a moment. So the idea is I've got this fabric that I will put on here and then it will wrap around to the front and it'll have a tie. So what I want to do is decorate it with all the different patterns and prints that I have. So I'll just kind of lay them out in a random fashion, kind of looking at them to see which ones I like where. And when I'm ready, I will trim some of them and then I will attach them to my piece. So I'm just kind of looking at it. All right, so I've just kind of laid them out where I think I want them. I will come back in and I will place these printed pieces over the top. So what I want to do right now is basically I want to base these into place. And how I do that is I use glue. I will add a little bit of glue all the way around where I want the fabric to stick. And then I'll be able to go to the sewing machine and sew it down. I am overlapping the fabrics just a little bit. If you don't, or if you forget, you'll end up having to kind of stitch over it maybe a couple of times to catch the edges. We're going to do an applique in a sense to these two fabric, to, to the top fabric, to the bottom fabric. All right, so what I'm going to do is flip this over and just trim off all these pieces that are hanging out from my foundation. All right, so I've basically just temporarily attached my fabrics where I want them. Now I'm going to come back in with some of my other prints that I like and attach those over the top, just kind of giving this a whole different look by adding these other prints. Okay, I think I've pretty much got them laid out the way I think I want them. So I'm just gonna temporarily tack them down with some glue. All right, so I've temporarily got these all pretty much where I want them. My next step is to take it over to the sewing machine. And what my plan is, is I will stitch around each of these blocks and then I will stitch in between wherever these connect and that will get this all paced together as one piece. Okay, so I'm over at my sewing machine. I have an electronic machine. It's just a few years old. I think I got it around 
I don't remember if it was 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. It's a brother. I have it set as a zigzag stitch. And that stitch is about 3.5 by 1.4 for the stitch width and length. I've got black thread in my upper and my lower. And I have regular needle and it's new thread. So whenever you're sewing, you want to make sure that you use new thread. If you ever have been sewing and the thread keeps breaking, two things. It could be your needle has a bar in it, a burr in it, and you need to take that out and get a new needle. Or the thread could be old and it's just breaking. So I'm just going to start sewing around each one. Now I'm sewing over the edge just a little bit so it catches that so it won't fray too much. And when I get to the end, I will leave my needle down, raise my presser foot up, and rotate it around, and then I can start stitching down the other side. So this is the patched work cover pieces all put together. down. I like to try to check. Sometimes I'm in a hurry and see that I got all the stitches in between any of the fabric pieces here so that they're all nice and flush. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a backer to it. This is where if you choose, you could add quilt batting if you want it fluffy. You could add thick fabric, thin fabric, whatever you like. In this case, I just want to add something that kind of covers up the stitches and sometimes the glue does seep through to the other side so I don't want to see that on the inside since I already cut this piece earlier and it's the same size I'll just lay these two pieces together and get them all matched up kind of get rid of some of the threads that are hanging off the edge and as I'm looking at this, I'm going to pin it in place so it doesn't move, but I'm also going to get what is going to be my tie prepared. So let me get out some fabric that I'm going to use for the tie to close this. All right, I've pinned it together so that this is one piece. The next thing I need to do is figure out, okay, how am I going to wrap this? I have a tendency to get a little over ambitious and I don't put it together correctly. So this is going to be the front part of my cover then it wraps around this way so that means right in here is where i want to put my tie and i'm looking at this fabric and it looks like it's not the same size so i'm going to trim it just a little bit because I, I don't want it sticking out past so this is going to be on this side so I will take this and find my center and kind of crease it with my finger. And I've got a push pin here. And then I have some dyed fabric. This is fabric that I used Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and dyed my fabric. I use cotton that I cut into strips and I thought that would make a pretty tie for this. And I have a tutorial that shows how I dye my fabric. So I'm going to line this up and put it just inside my cover piece here and pin it together. So now what I need to do is stitch all the way around this outside edge. I'm just going to stitch around the outside edge. And if you want, I may, or you want, or I can back stitch over where the tie is. So I'm going to remove the pins that were holding it together. And here's where if you want to trim up the thread, you can. I'm going to trim where it was kind of sticking past a couple of spots. So there's my basic cover. So what I would do is one of two things. If I had a journal already made that was bound, I would determine where... I want this to meet up and mark it and then I would add in a either elastic or a piece of fabric or a ribbon that I could slip the cover into. Another option is when you are before you put the back on is you make it have a pocket in it so that when you slip this in it fits. Uh, if it was 
putting the journal directly to the cover, I would just open it up to the center and I would pin these together with my clips, punch my holes, do a pamphlet seam, pamphlet stitch binding. I could get my words out. And then I would wrap this around. My fabric is longer than I need, so I'm just going to wrap it a couple of times. And then I make it a little bit longer so that it can tuck right in there. And then that would be the cover. I hope you like this tutorial that it gives you some ideas to grab your fabric, whether it be fabric that you printed, gel printed, or physically printed on a printer, or it was commercial fabric that you patchwork together to make your own journal cover. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Hey, check the description box to links to my social media as well as the digital kit that I use. And some of these are now a digital download for my fabric gel prints that you can use on your own. And what else? I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard time where I make journals live from start to finish. I show you different techniques of making journal pages and cards and tuck spots and pockets and whatnot. And then we bind the journal together in a cover. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate your support. Do leave me a comment about what you thought about this project or if you have any questions. All right, everybody have a fabulous day. Bye.